Nils, welcome to the Commerce Talks podcast. Today we are talking about uh, the B2B industry, the e-commerce part of the B2B industry and uh, Carrier.com. Before we are talking about Carrier, please tell the audience who you are and what you are doing at Carrier. Yeah, good morning, Alex. Uh, really happy to be here and excited to share uh, my insights. Um, yeah, I'm uh, relatively new to Carrier. Carrier is a company um, uh, which has a turnover of about 20 billion uh, US dollars, so it's quite uh, big. Um, Carrier is all around healthy buildings, healthy homes, and the connected cold chain. And um, I'm working in the business unit commercial refrigeration. Um, commercial refrigeration uh, is providing um, cooling solutions for grocery retailers typically and also for warehouses. So the goods, the frozen or cooled goods that you um, take your uh, um, uh, goods out in a supermarket, this could be a carrier um, equipment, hopefully. Um, I'm responsible for connectivity. So what does it mean? So in the end, it's about building up digital services, building up IoT services making sure that we transform the business from a hardware, pure hardware business as it was in the past into the future, combining hard and uh, software in a meaningful way. Okay, before we are talking about the IoT and smartness part of the refrigerating solutions in the supermarkets, um, let's talk about like the e-commerce smartness of, of Carrier. So I assume this is a business where e-commerce uh, did not have a, a big part in, uh, in the past. So uh, if I was a procurement guy from a supermarket chain most likely I, I knew somebody from carrier who I called when there's like a new supermarket a new refrigerator infrastructure to be um, to be built is it still the case today or is, is there really like online demand for such complex solutions yeah. uh, so you're exactly describing the reality so this is how it works today so today today it's really a business where there is a lot of manual work in, involved. So typically, um, the grocery retailers, they send out an RFP. Um, there is a bidding uh, process. Uh, so this is yeah, very traditional, uh, I would say. And, but we definitely see that there is some movement uh, in the market. Uh, we see that everybody is also working on efficiency. Um, so we see that uh, e-commerce is coming. And this is also one of the topics where I think that, that, that we should drive. There will be definitely complex um, projects because typically if you build a completely new supermarket or if you do the ref um, refurbishment of a major supermarket, uh, it's an investment that will be a couple of hundred thousand euro or even um, seven digit uh, euro uh, amount. And in those cases, it's typically it, it's a project. So probably also in the future, this will not be a, a three click uh, a purchasing process. But there is definitely equipment, uh, spare parts, uh, accessories, uh, where it's very, very likely uh, that this will come. And this is also expected. I mean, also our customers, everybody is using e-commerce in private life. So people, of course, uh, step by step also expect that the processes are digitalized in this B2B environment. But today, the industry is quite, yeah, uh, quite traditional, I would say. Okay, let's start maybe with the with the um, with the supermarkets, uh, and, and then we can go into like warehouses and private homes. Um, so my um, perception from a supermarket is that there's more and more refrigerating solution in supermarkets. So if I if we have like a um, one thousand square foot supermarket, about like twenty percent of all the aisles are refrigerator uh, um, based, which wasn't the case like ten years ago. Um, is it only my perception, or is it something we are seeing? Oh, in that's the definitely what we see in. The market and i think the most obvious example is the discounters so the discounters in the past they didn't have uh, uh, frozen goods for example and this really changed and so we see that there is a lot of um yeah expansion on uh, frozen or refrigerated goods this also comes with the convenience trend uh, because um, i mean today and especially also in COVID times it's very convenient uh, to have some pre-packaged food or a soup or something like that which is cooled this is also um, uh, one of the reasons why the cooled space is increasing uh, we see also that for vegetables uh, and and to some extent also fruits this is coming more and more especially also in countries where it's a little bit warmer we see the trend uh, that this is expanding so you're fully right your observation uh, is correct the market has really been uh, expanding over the last couple of years 
in, in a normal supermarket, and I know there is no normal supermarket, but in a normal mid-sized supermarket in Central Europe, how much of the space are, are occupied by refrigerating solutions? Um, so that I, can, I cannot tell you the space, um, but I know, so we typically, we measure in meters uh, and depending on the size of the supermarket. So this could be anything between, uh, yeah, let's say, 15 and 50 meters of um, uh, cooled goods in an average environment. I mean, it definitely, it makes a, it makes a difference if you have a smaller sized uh, city center um, supermarket or if you have a hypermarket that is somewhere uh, at the, uh, outside the city. So you have a big difference, of course. I mean, the bigger, uh, the more cooled uh, space, but it's, it's, it's a visible uh, part of the store, of course, yeah. Yeah, and, and if, if I remember correctly, there was always like the, the complaint about like cooled, um, cooled products needs more um, energy. It's much cheaper to store like non-cooled products or convenience products uh, in the standard shelf, uh, which do which actually have like a much better shelf time. Uh, um, and there, though, actually, the podcast that go that will air like before this one is from a Tetra Pak, and the, one of their pitches obviously is you can, uh, you can, you can use those Tetra Paks um, in a non-cooled environment, uh, which uh, which usually is um, connected with a much higher shelf life. So instead of like one week, you can it can stay there like for two or three. Um, weeks. I totally understand like the convenience factor and the freshness factor because like um, uh, um, uh, cooled products seem to be like fresher than the products that are not cooled. But but what what's the total trade off? Like from a carrier perspective, though, so how would you re react on this kind of sustainability energy yeah. consumption? Yeah, I mean, energy uh, consu issue? consumption is definitely it's a big topic because uh, typically more than half of the energy consumption in a supermarket is just based on the cooling system so that's it's definitely relevant and especially those days where sustainability is very uh, relevant and also where electricity prices are of high uh, relevance this is one of our utmost um, yeah, focus topics to really making sure uh, to reduce the energy consumptions and we are working hard on that and there has happened a lot already in the last couple of years and there is more uh, more to come um, so we we consider uh, this as an absolute necessity to reduce the electricity consumption, but we also see that um, every day's life of people yeah, leads to an expansion uh, of the cooled uh, goods. So the expectation towards food, the freshness, and maybe also um, ensuring the freshness through from farm to fork, if you will, this is increasing. So we see this uh, trend, and it's not that easy. Also, you, you don't want to educate the customers. I mean, this is a discussion always. How, how is it possible to somehow educate the customers to change the behavior? It's not that easy. We see that in other industries. So how long it took with electric vehicles, for example. So if the government decides something, it takes time uh, to somehow change the market. So I don't think that the cool goods section will, uh, will be shrinking. It's more on us to improve the energy efficiency to make sure um, that, uh, yeah, that, that the, the impact is lower. What will definitely help um, as well what is the what is the progress on the energy energy consumption side? So same uh, same device like ten years or twenty years ago uh, versus today is like minus fifty percent, minus seventy, minus twenty percent. Um, it's definitely a, a, a relevant double digit um, um, uh, improvement. Um, it's not fifty percent, um, uh, and we are working on that. So that's a continuous process. So I think this process will uh, will not come to an end um, short term. So there will be. Um, many, yeah, there, there will be significant progress will be possible in the next couple of years still. Yeah, so there was, I think there is other industries where this happened, where the pressure was maybe also uh, higher in the past. And um, uh, so I see a great potential here. And what we also um, can do, and this is also one of the aspects where I think digital can really help, we can also help to, um, yeah, to, to do load management, for example. So to, to really make sure in those cases where, for example, um, there is a high load uh, in the system currently. Maybe you have the opportunity to shift um, uh, to shift the power consumption. Defrosting, in our case, is a is a process that consumes energy, and you can manage this a little bit. So this does not need to happen at a specific time. You could say, okay, we do this in times where maybe electricity um, is there because the sun is shining outside, because um, wind um, uh, energy production is uh, is high. And this is what, what we can do. So it's reducing the energy on the one hand side, but it's also 
uh, it's also doing load management. So that's where I think there is great potential um, that can be leveraged. Is this leading to the fact that uh, modern supermarkets are building um, solar yeah. panels on yeah. their roofs? So that, that's definitely that's definitely an aspect, and that will wow. help okay. us. So if this um, is really expanding, um, uh, it's much easier to do a local optimization, um, uh, of course. And uh, it's also necessary to do more energy management uh, on, on the store level, because we are also expecting that the electric, uh, electric vehicle charging uh, will increase on the supermarket side. So you, you have a completely different uh, energy production and consumption pattern in the future where we can play an integral role uh, to really um, yeah, make, make this feasible and use the, the knowledge, the system know-how that we have in a meaningful way uh, to make that happen, to make the transition to a more sustainable world possible here. And you are working in an area where you try to make the uh, solutions smarter. So what what um, what vectors do we have like in making them smarter? So one one vector you just uh, told me about, um, uh, though the time when this defrosting happens could be shifted to like I don't know, lunchtime when the sun is shining uh, brightest and produces most of the power through solar yeah. panels. What, yeah. what other smartness so, so there features is one area, can be built into those solutions? This is an area that we are using already for a couple of years so that's this is not a no, new topic so about a third of the stores that we have equipped with our equipment are connected already today uh, but maybe in a, in a relatively basic way uh, and this is coming from alarm management uh, because it's uh, really essential uh, if something happens to the system for whatever reason uh, that it is known so in the past it was like okay there was a red light flashing maybe in the store and then someone uh, needed to uh, to take action um, mm. today in those cases where the store is connected, um, uh, the message um, uh, is coming uh, through the system. Uh, we have a team uh, sitting in Prague and they are working with the data. So there is some basic automation is already uh, running also today. And in those cases where the system cannot decide itself, um, uh, colleagues on site in Prague, they will take a decision saying, OK, what do we need to do? Is it about uh, calling the store manager to check? I don't know if the door of the cold room is open, as an example. Um, so this is a technology that has been used in a basic way uh, already, uh, I would say, f like 15, 20 years ago, uh, this started. And this is really uh, creating value. So it saves time, uh, it improves the process for us and also uh, for our customers. But there is, as I mentioned, it's, at the moment it's relatively basic and we see great potential um, coming to a level where this is uh, more automated, where the system itself uh, is in a position to take the right decision saying, okay, this is probably a false alarm um, because we detect, um, as I just mentioned, that the door was open or maybe that there was an overstocking uh, in the system. And this would um, reduce the workload on our side, of course, um, but also on the customer side, because if the customer, uh, the store man manager, who's typically very busy, um, uh, does not have to care about the cooling, this helps. Um, a second topic uh, where we see uh, also great potential to uh, to really do continuous improvement um, uh, of the equipment. Um, so today, typically, the equipment is installed and then there are certain set points uh, um, in the system are defined. Um, and since the environment is changing, and this could be that the temperature is different in wintertime compared to summertime, uh, we also see that from time to time, the goods in, uh, in the cooling equipment uh, are changing. So you have a different uh, environment from time to time. And uh, it would really help store operations and also energy consumption in the end if um, yeah, you could adapt those um, uh, processes in a meaningful way, in an automatic way, maybe also by software uh, updates, for example. Okay, and, 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 and but, but what I read when, uh, especially when we are thinking about like um, trend presentations on digital fairs, um, there was al always the idea that the refrigerator, yeah. not only at home, but especially in the supermarket, becomes like super smart. Yeah. So the, the fridge knows how many Tetra packs of milk had been taken off and when it needs to yeah. be restocked, restocked by um, the store manager or, or by the fridge manager, wh whoever's going to restocking it. And, and, you, and, and then the fridge might even know when is the time um, on a day when most of the stock is, uh, is getting out of the uh, is getting out of the um, fridge and therefore like the cooling setup c could be managed. So 
is this something we see in real life? And let's forget about the yeah. um, Amazon uh, um, um, cashless uh, or um, uh, yeah, cashless checkouts. Uh, where can we see it or how far are we advanced in this area? Yeah, so this is coming and this is all already relatively uh, close, I would say. Um, it, it's running in, in some areas. So it's the good thing is it's much more easy uh, compared to the residential uh, situation. If you look at your fridge at home, it's much more complicated. Uh, the fridge at home uh, is typically very crowded. You buy at different um, uh, you buy at different retailers. It's not that easy to detect the goods in a grocery store. It's different because you have a well defined uh, shelf space typically um, and there are systems uh, already available um, where you can um, assign a specific product to a specific space in the store and uh, through measuring the distance um, uh, for example you can see okay is it still one package or five packages uh, that are available there is also first solutions available with cameras so cameras that are yeah. um, mounted on the opposite uh, um, uh, opposite of the aisle uh, maybe Yep. Uh, but in the future, we will see such sensors also in the equipment. So that's also definitely one of the topics we are looking into. So what does it need? So is it about temperature sensors? Is it about weight sensors? Is it about cameras? Is it about distance measurement? And then uh, in this B2B environment, it's, uh, it's well uh, possible, I think, to do that. And there is also different... Um, yeah, different aspects. So on the one hand side, it's, it's restocking and out of stock management is a really crucial topic in retail. Um, and it's also, for example, for the manufacturers of the products, it's very interesting to know, for example, if there is a promotion, has the promotion been executed uh, in the right way? Was uh, during the promotion, the restocking, was it done as it was agreed? So there is different entities that are somehow really uh, interested. So. Uh, I, I expect this to be uh, broadly available in the next couple of years in the residential area. I think this will take much, much more time. So that's a good thing. I, 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 I totally get it. But let's go back to the supermarket like org chart. And uh, I'm pretty sure you can uh, you can sell this idea to the marketing manager in order to um, uh, so he gets like better data for his campaigns. So it's like the. Uh, butter campaign or the milk campaign in a specific area is it working well or is it not working well and maybe even this data is better than the data he's getting out of the um, uh, um, cash register uh, um, system because that's another source of data but the procurement guy usually buying those products is not so much connected to the marketing yep. uh, uh, um, guy because his interest is not um, top line so it's not about like creating more revenue or being more efficient his only focus is like um, getting a better price from from carrier so do you see those things come together in more modern supermarket or 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 have have do I have a wrong assessment no i think your assessment is not completely wrong so this is definitely one of the challenges but we see that those topics are somehow coming uh, uh, on, mm -hmm. on top of the agenda also in higher management and that's also i think where i see a chance now with the digital um, uh, within the digital arena to really lift this topic out of the pure procurement discussion where you have a, a focus on specifications and a price really to come to a different discussion a, a discussion that is more about outcome so what really matters for uh, the store manager maybe and the store manager of course he is well interested in uh, generating additional turnover i mean yes he wants to reduce cost but He's very aware that he needs to do something to drive the top line. But it's it's a process that started. And this is a process where I think digital um, is somehow uh, being the enabler to, to drive the transformation. But this will take a couple of years. So I'm, I'm very sure this is nothing that you can just uh, switch on and off. Uh, it will take some time to elevate those topics um, yeah, to a different level of discussion and combine the store operations, the marketing colleagues and the purchasing colleagues uh, on our customer side. Okay, but if I were a supermarket manager, not just a store manager, but a, a chain manager, then my idea of having smart fridges would be to create data that I can sell to the uh, vendors, to the merchants, to, I don't know, um, Danone yeah. or Nestle and saying, okay, you know, based on your um, product USP versus pricing versus where does a, is a product located versus like another product uh, this is your this is your performance super valuable uh, super valuable insights we haven't even seen this in standard shelves because usually standard shelves are not 
electrified, I would say, or it's harder to, to make them smart. Uh, fridge solutions, usually they have like a smart solution already. As you said, they have this kind of alarm, door is open, too long, please go there, close the door. Uh, um, but you say we are still at the very beginnings, right? Yeah. So it, in, in the it, beginning, so at the moment, what you can see in the market, there is that there is some retrofitting solutions is available, but um, uh, it's to some extent for the retrofitting, it's also more challenging in the cooled environment because if you have a battery, uh, that there is a limited lifetime. Also, having millions of batteries out there is also not very sustainable. And this is also why I think we see that we really can add value. But um, of course, this takes some time because it needs some changes to our hardware. So even if we have the connectivity uh, today uh, for, for the basic functions, it needs to be further developed that we really have the cameras integrated, the sensors integrated. And I'm also pretty sure that not all customers will have exactly the same approach. So maybe one customer um, uh, wants to go with a camera and another customer wants to go with a different camera. So I think the, the, the standards some, somehow need to be figured out. And I think that's also one of the challenges for us that we need to prepare the hardware in a way uh, that we are flexible because the life cycle of, a, of the equipment is 10 to 15 years. And of course, we need to prepare um, that yeah, we are flexible and we are maybe able to change the sensors uh, from sensor A to sensor B uh, within uh, the production uh, time of, uh, of 10 years or so. Okay, and, and you said um, that there's like a um, transformation journey now for Korea, which leads um, out of this hardware game, which I totally support. Um, and um, But this, if, if we are thinking this through, then this would lead to a, to a company where you're not selling hardware anymore, but you're selling services, not maybe only smart services, but the service could be you can lend a fridge. So it's still like, you you still own it uh you just it, you, you just lease it uh, based on how many times per day is a fridge opened or what is the how much uh, how much power is used per day to cool down products stuff stuff like this which you can monitor centrally and then just exchange the fridge if uh, if there's like a better solution available which which could um which could um help the yeah. procurement department because they don't need to spend too much money uh, um, anymore, and and you're slightly going into this platform economy um, play. So it's it, that's kind of um, I assume in your charts the 2030 vision of carrier that's somewhere in it. But how, how much how much substance is is, is behind yeah, that idea? Yeah. So I I think exactly the scenario you are describing this nicely outlines how an outcome-driven uh, uh, offering uh, could look like. Because I think in this setting, um, we can really combine the know-how on the hardware, the know-how on the services, on the data, and also the physical service. Don't forget the service technicians that we have in the field. We can really combine that in a way to create a hassle-free yeah, hassle -free atmosphere uh, for the customer. And this is could be one of the scenarios, um, but I'm fully with you. It will take time because, and we've seen that in other industries, it takes time to do that because it's a complete change um, of how you work. It's a complete change of how you do purchasing, for example, because it's not about um, uh, having a specification uh, and then uh, setting a price to the specification. We need to understand uh, what really drives our customers and how can we, um, yeah, how can we create a value proposition that really makes sense in front of the customer. And it shouldn't be just a pure leasing model. I think a pure leasing model is probably not the, the right thing. So I think combining it with the different services, um, yeah, th this is an option. I'm also quite sure that not all customers will immediately buy into that idea, um, but I can definitely see that there is customers that are interested um, uh, in such things. Um, uh, but it will take some time. So I think the process, um, if you start it now, uh, will take a couple of years until this is somehow embraced. And this is also what we see in other industries. So it's not not an easy journey, but I think um, it would tr really transform us into the new uh, into a new era here. And it would also force us to change internal processes because if you have such a model, you're somehow forced to rethink the processes and how you do, how you work internally as well. And this. Uh, could really uh, speed up the process, I guess, internally. 
Okay, talking about service technicians. So I had a situation, I think, half a year ago in my uh, Rewe supermarket, which is a close uh, supermarket close by where um, they have like a three meter fridge area for ice cream. And this was deactivated for a week. And, and the store manager told me, yeah, you know, people are opening and closing, opening and closing like too long of a time. And now the fridge is, uh, fridge is gone. We have to we have to replace it. Uh, um, um, w w so he was really annoyed. I was also annoyed because there was no ice cream available. So, um, and as you say, energy consumption is a big um, issue and like people really opening and closing and some people just don't close it. So do you see markets where we have like more this more of this like automated solution, uh, like, um, like, the, um, like the cigarette machines where you just click on an icon and say, I'd like to have like frozen broccoli. <laughs> Uh, and then the machine sends it to you. So everything is kind of capsulated, which makes it way more energy efficient, way more energy efficient. Uh, and then, uh, um, which uh, which definitely could save energy. Is this something which we see some, um, somewhere already? I, I think not. Uh, I don't believe that this will be the dominating solution in a, a standard grocery supermarket. I think for special occasions, it absolutely makes sense. Um, but don't forget, and this is a discussion th that we also have uh, with our customers from time to time, if there is a door or if there is uh, even, yeah, even if it is a vending machine, this is a, a, a barrier that maybe limits the process. So I know that some of our customers, they are to some extent hesitant um, to install doors uh, because if there is a door, the risk is that the customer is not that easily uh, pulling additional things into his shopping uh, bag. And um, also not to forget, also the restocking of goods is also taking more time. So if there is no door, it's very easy because you, you can just walk. And this is also, uh, this is a discussion uh, that is going on in the market. I, 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 I just try to, I just try to remember if my last supermarket experience where there were no doors in a, in a fridge area. Uh, with the uh, discounters. That for, seems uh, very old school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah? So discounters um, where it's really about having a very high turnover of the products. Uh, this is uh, a discussion, but I also believe with the electricity prices and the sustainability targets, um, uh, th this will come. But it, it hinders the easy shopping process, ah, of course. Okay. Oh, that, so I'm like too, I'm too far ahead already. Like it's like it's just, the door is like the latest level of innovation <laughs> that was implemented. Uh, okay, sorry. I, I just, I could, it's, and, and now we have uh, doors that are closing automatically. I saw like this, um, I don't know what is this, like in English, like this um, yeah. uh, 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 sliding yeah. doors. I think uh, uh, it is. So I see in some supermarkets that are a little bit more yeah. efficient. Um, okay, got it. Um, so, but but um, are there are there any innovation supermarkets you're you have like um, out there from a carrier perspective as a, as a blueprint or do you drive innovation with together with amazon with this cashless checkout because in an amazon environment if i remember correctly there were like refrigerator solutions implemented uh, and there must have been this kind of smart um, smartness built in this um, solution is this something where you have been involved um so uh, of course i cannot disclose be, um, as soon as they are not not public any uh, specific customer projects but i mean um uh, what i think is uh, is clear amazon they did a lot on their own no? so amazon they have a lot of knowledge uh, on the software and also on the sensors so they somehow built um yeah things also on their own uh, to a certain extent but it's I think very interesting to understand how Amazon is doing that because probably Amazon has the most uh, forward-looking approach uh, towards how a future customer experience uh, could look like. So it's definitely uh, it's definitely something to look into, and we see also in uh, in Germany, for example, that there is also the German um, grocery retailers. They are also playing uh, with this. So, for example, in Cologne, uh, there was a Rewe uh, opened, I think, last year uh, that shares the same concept. So we see that also uh, the traditional retailers, they, they are playing with the concept uh, of doing the, this cashless uh, checkout uh, uh, processes. So we see that and that's definitely what we are working on. We always try to work together with our customers, trying to understand what, what, is, what are the needs, what drives our customers and how could the future look like. But what is also visible, of course, I mean, those um, uh, yeah, checkout less um, supermarkets, this is probably also not for everybody. Um, um, there is, at the moment, there is customer groups that are hesitant uh, to do something like that. 
And there is also still some operational hurdles to do that on a, on a broader scale. You can also see, for example, that the, uh, the rollout um, of the Amazon Go or Amazon Fresh stores, that this was not as fast as it was announced. So it's not that easy. It's and not they're that closed easy. already. Yeah, some yeah, are yeah. Also already closed, closed already. but already. you see that grocery retail, it's a... It, it, it's a very, um, it's a rather complicated process. So it's not that easy to set up those operations uh, and make them, uh, uh, yeah, make them yeah, to a smooth operation. So this takes some time and you need significant knowledge to do that. But we are definitely looking into the concepts because it's, yeah, it, this is how parts of the future definitely will look like. And I mean, there's also other uh, aspects that uh, affect us. Because if this happens, so if we have a store um, like this, and if we have also more e-commerce, the store layout will change uh, maybe. So the dark uh, part of the store will be much bigger in the future. So this will have an impact also on our products and also the digital part. So that's also something that we need to keep in the, in the back of our head that it, the, the concepts may change the entire setup of the supermarket and also the entire setup of the industry to a certain extent. Okay, um, and as you are the expert in this in this field, um, what will change in my uh, uh, in my domestic environment? So, is there going to be like more smartness in the fridge? I think the latest innovation that convinced the market was like uh, uh, was ice cube production <laughs> in the fridge, which is like a new thing in Europe. I think it was standard in the US, but in Europe it's a new thing. Nobody had water supply. <laughs> it's a it's, it's a fridge, but there's no smart thing in the fridge so i think it's more energy efficient now but if i think about all the new um, delivery options with picnic and knuspa and um it's not even close to what was sold to the consumers a couple of years ago i think in um in the netherlands there was kind of an albert hein um solution where they kind of restocked the fridge from the outside i'm not sure if this is still a thing but It, it it feels like future is far away uh, uh, in my in my home. What do you think? Yeah, here? I mean the future takes definitely longer than some people expected. No, so I'm fully with you. It's it's a it's a complicated process. And as mentioned in the beginning, we see that some parts of the process are rather complicated, like in a residential environment, for example, this. Um, uh, image detection, understanding what is in the fridge. It's a rather complicated, um, it's a rather complicated process. So I, I think what may come uh, in the future, uh, and this goes then maybe B2B to B2C, to um, uh, is that what we call uh, the cold chain topic, uh, maybe um, if, since people are more uh, or want to be more aware of what they are eating and um, if the food is good or not, uh, that you maybe in the future will be in a position to understand, okay, where exactly um, has this um, uh, th this food uh, coming uh, been coming from? How was the transportation? Was everything fine? Was the temperature uh, okay? And so on. And this could uh, also, of course, make it um, uh, to your fridge. So you you may see an end-to-end -end, um, uh, story here, but this is also a topic that will take a, a longer time. So I'm fully with you. I think it takes time. On the residential side, um, yeah, in, in the fridges, the camera in the fridge, this was one of the innovations but it's still uh, comparably small. So this did not make it to, um, uh, yeah, to a large scale uh, share of the market. So it has not been adopted because it's quite uh, expensive so far. And uh, also because the services around it are not, yeah, uh, they, they are not easy and they are not, not precise uh, at the moment. So this is yeah, maybe an invest in the future. I, I'm, sh I'm sure it will come, uh, but it takes way longer than yeah, many people expected in the very beginning. Okay, fast forward to 2025. What, what, what can we expect? Doors in a uh, fridge solution at discounters, I hope, uh, but what else will be there in our daily um, uh, grocery yeah. journey? Yeah, yeah. So uh, I think what I'm also convinced what will change, there will be more um, interaction uh, in, in the store. So I, I can also imagine that in the future, maybe there you, as you just mentioned, you have sliding doors to make it convenient for customers to take in, uh, to pull, pull in uh, a certain goods. Uh, I think there will be some interaction. Maybe maybe you have um, uh, screens um, um, uh, instead of just glass doors. Uh, this could be an option to do promotions, uh, um, to pinpoint customers to a specific promotion maybe. Of course, you could also do that in a personalized way. Um, and this was maybe not possible in the past, but 
nowadays where most grocery retailers have an own app, it could be also feasible to do that in a personalized way. Saying, okay, you're walking by um, uh, and, and then you get the recommendation, hey, there is a, a special promotion just for you, Alex, on pizza or whatsoever. Just, yeah. I, just, oh. I just thought about this. So, so uh, uh, based on your buying journey, you will get like a twenty percent discount on the on your next fifty pizzas. Exactly. So, so, something like that. That's yeah. good. Something that could like be an that. annoying thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this is uh, this is something I could imagine also as a um, yeah, if you will, as a next step, so that there is an interaction um, uh, somehow, uh, and that this can be also used to, to uh, re reflect on the cold chain uh, that I just mentioned, if people are interested to, to really understand, okay, what, what about the product? Um, so what should I know uh, about the product, where it's coming from and how the, yeah, maybe the logistics process uh, went over the last couple of uh, years. And, and like going back to like the supermarket perspective, um, so like you, you said, it's an investment, 100, a couple of 100K uh, to maybe even like a million or, or even more. So compared to the overall investment of like a supermarket, let's say the building is there. Is it the major part yeah. uh, from yeah. an investment point of view, yeah. the refrigerating yeah. solutions? Yeah, that, that, that's definitely the case. So that's uh, definitely the biggest uh, investment. And it's also, it, it's not only the cabinets that you see in the store. So there is typically also the, we, we call it racks. So the the system where the cold uh, is produced. Uh, typically, you do not see that as a customer. So it's maybe on the roof or it's somewhere in the garage uh, or at the back of the building. Um, and yeah, so and this is why uh, it's really an essential part of the investment if you do a, a new build. And if you do a renovation, it's also the, 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 the largest share typically. Yeah. Though this system is not built in like in my um, home fridge, it's it's somewhere it's it's an, an ex, it's an external device more yeah, or less on the roof. The, yeah. Typically, that's the case. Typically, that's the case. I mean, there there is some uh, some other solutions we call that plug in. So that's typically the solutions that you find uh, in front of the cashier, where maybe the uh, the ice cream for the kids uh, is easily accessible. So those are not connected. They work like like a standard fridge at home. Uh, but most of the cabinets that you see in the store are uh, connected to a central um, yeah, cooling system. Yeah. So then I would expect, like from my Rewe supermarket, rather innovations in 2030. Uh, really looking forward to the um, to the tailored solution on the screen in front of the ice cream. Yes, I'm looking forward to that as well. Yeah, at some point you also you need to to dream a little bit, have a vision, uh, and we know that not everything will be uh, will be available maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but but there's like the, the, what the interesting thing in your market is so it's still the question is still open or the answer to the question is still open who owns the data could be you could be carrier could be the Revit supermarket though so, and it really depends who is a little bit more progressive in this yeah. platform yeah. Uh, play who owns the data like in, uh, um, in, in 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 ten years or could be the one who is like providing the main shopping app or discount yeah. Um, yeah. app for for a supermarket yeah. so it's it's still a it's still a hot topic to be. In it's actually a cool topic <laughs> if you look look a bit uh, uh, a bit closer. But this was uh, super interesting, uh, Niels. Thank you for uh, for your time, and we definitely have to follow up on uh, your own e-commerce capability. Yes, we'll do that. Thank you for having me. Uh, I really enjoyed the session. Thank you. Thank you.